I just got done telling you all about how funny Ray J is. You all seen my thumbnail. Ray J's face is hilarious. That's We really need to just have a camera on Ray J's face 24 hours a day. He is hilarious. You hear me? And I'm like, come on through, cook. Yeah. I want to put my soapbox. That's basically it. Let's talk about drag and all its forms. What? <laughs> hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for season six episode two of Love Hip Hop Hollywood. Um Ray J. That's all I gotta say. Ray is crazy. But anyway, we start right off here with that battle that was going on between Moniz and April. And they were at that table going back and forth and it was starting to get a little heated and Moniz was about to dip into her crazy pretty good and April was sitting over there. And before I knew it. I didn't got confused. They done made up. Um, and Monice apologized to April. And I was confused. But I said, okay, I'm just going to keep watching. I'm, I'm follow through. And and I'm kind of, for a change, I'm starting to see Monice is crazy. And I'm starting to understand some of her crazy. So I said, ooh, maybe I need to go see me, one of my doctors, honey, because um. You ain't supposed to be seeing Monice is crazy. But Monice knows that Drew and April are lying through their teeth. She's not crazy. She can see it like we can see. It. it don't even look like they're not. They are lying through their teeth. And I'm like, whatever. So she apologized. I said, I see you, Monice, girl. You playing that game. You're playing that game, girl. Keep my enemy close. I understand. A mess. Moving on. Yo-Yo and Apple Watts. So Yo-Yo offered to be Apple Watts' mentor. She's doing um, this whole little thing. Um, you know, she has this, it's, it's a program for talented youth. And it's all mentorship and that kind of thing. And she is Mr. Ray working with her. Y'all know Mr. Ray is messy. But I said, okay, I said, I don't know about that Yo-Yo. But Yo-Yo is pretty grounded. And she's like, well, what's going on, you know? And I saw here Apple Watts is talking about drinking and acting out. And I'm listening to her and I'm looking at her. And I said, oh, my gosh. Apple Watts is the Leandria Johnson of Love and Hip Hop. She's the Leandria Johnson of the hip hop world. She got a bunch of stuff going on, a bunch of life issues. And... She doesn't have a problem being Apple Watts, whatever that is and whatever that entails, however ghetto people view her or however wrong people view her, she's okay with being her and she drinks. And then when she drinks, it seems as though her personal stuff gets involved and it's a mishmash of mess and she be going off. Leandria Johnson. That is Leandria. Leandria is the gospel version. Apple Watts is the hip hop version. I'm like, cool. And we love Leandria. So I guess we're going to learn to love Apple. So it is what it is. And I'm here for it. Because, you know, I had a little tumultuous time with Miss Apple last time. Last, uh, I guess I said last semester. Lord, last <laughs> season it was up and down it was like okay come on i'm gonna give you a chance then she would do something i'd be like what the hell is wrong with her so i have that little thing with her but she is likable she really is likable and a lot of times her heart is in the right place you know what i mean so we're gonna end up loving apple the same way we love leandria i gotta i gotta sneak a suspicion but anyway moving on so we see lyrica and her girlfriend sia has actually come in sia is from atlanta she came in, and it's her and Princess. Child, listen, this thing got on my nerves. I said, now, y'all going to stop this. Y'all going to stop this right away. Princess is crying. 
Lyric is crying. And I'm like, Princess, what the heck is you crying about? She crying about some mess that Ray J used to do. I said, girl, if you don't shut up. And the two of them is just crying and seeing, looking at them like, yeah, okay. Anyhow, and then, baby, and during this little conversation, they to put it out there, they said, child, Summer Bunny is just old nasty girl running around, hopping around from dick to dick. I said, oh, and all dicks that don't belong to her, they belong to other people. I said, oh, Miss Summer Bunny, we ain't even seen you yet, girl, but, um, your name is pure trash on the streets. So I'm like, oh, jeez, this is terrible. So I can't wait to, to run into this uh, summer hip-hop heading funny. Because, girl, listen, I told y'all before, you cannot outrun a bad reputation, honey. It, it just don't happen. Anyway, moving on. April and Monice meet up again. And this is what I said. I know for sure. I I see you, Moni's slaughter. I see you, girl. I see you. We see each other. Okay. <laughs> she invited April to come on tour with her. I said, girl, <laughs> you are playing this all the way to the hip, honey. I said, okay. And and sure enough, in her confessional. Keep your enemies close. I said, girl, I just, listen, honey, you can't play no old queen, honey. I knew what you was doing, honey. I said, come on through, Miss Monice, honey. Miss Monice is getting ready to give Miss April a little taste of something, honey, and I am so here for it because, April, you're a liar. You're a liar. You have pro And I used to like April, but you have proven yourself to be a liar and a bit of a slut. I'm like, what is going on? It is so ugly. It is so ugly because you got this slutty behavior going on and you're not admitting to it. You're walking around like it's not going on. Girl, bye. Anyway, but Miss Bonice got something for you, girl. She got something for you, mama. I'm telling you, you better watch it. You in danger, girl. Anyway, we see Yo-Yo, Mr. Ray, and Apple Watts. They go down. They're at the little mentorship program. You see the kids, and there's a lot of them. I said, this is, that's, that's great. And it's right there in Compton, you know, where Yo-Yo's originally from, where Apple's originally from. It's like, this is nice. This is really cool. And the next thing you know, here comes Summer Bunny. She comes in, her and her manager, and right away, I'm like, Apple, hold on, baby. Stand down. What is going on? Apple just attacked her. It was like, honey, and she's giving her all this mess about A1 and Lyrica and how she's sleeping with Lyrica's husband. I'm like, no, 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 Apple, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Like I said, I told y'all before, her heart be in the right place. But baby, you out of order. You're attacking this woman about these people's marriage who done screwed up their own marriage. So you, you, girl, you look crazy fighting for them because they got marital problems way bigger than Summer Bunny, okay? And now you done got this whole thing. Well, it was a mess and it was just not the right time, not the right place. Everybody's just kind of looking and it was ugly. It was ugly. And, you know, I was like, mm, girl, y'all acting like the stereotypes now. And this is what we don't need what we don't need. Anyway, they separated them out. Then we go down to this listening party that Kay Michelle had. Moniz brings April with her. Brittany B is there. Brittany B meets April for the first time. I don't know what this whole thing was about, but we got to see that Brittany, you a little ghetto too, boo boo, and they were just rump, 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 back and forth, and it was given. I was like, who meets people like this for the first time? Like, have you ever met somebody and found yourself going back and forth with them for the first time? Whenever I've run into some stuff like that, it's something about the person that got a whole misconception of you before they ever met you and they're attacking. I don't go no further with them because see, you make me rip a layer of your skin off. Ain't got time for it. And that's how I felt. It was like, it was ugly. Like, that whole interaction with them was just so ugly. I was like, y'all fighting about Y'all don't even know each other. Well, everybody does it, um, 
everybody's opinion don't matter. And this, that, it was just nasty. It was just all nasty. I was like, mm -mm, y'all need to get out of each other's face because y'all just don't even need to try. Just leave it alone. Because y'all ain't got nowhere to go from here but down. Just leave it alone. Anyway, then K. Michelle comes. You know, Kimberly don't make nothing no better. She's just rude, honey. She's like, Oh, girl, what the hell are you doing here with April? Uh, what what y'all doing hanging together? This, that, and the other. She accused April of kissing fizz. And Monice was sitting there looking stupid. And she going to say, well, I don't care because he's just my, I love him. But I love him as my baby's daddy. No, we all know better than that, Monice, but okay. And honey, April was standing up there in denial. Well, where are you getting this from? Do you know for a fact that I kissed Drew? I said, girl, you don't even sound convincing. You don't sound convincing at all. You sound like you've done more than kiss Drew, but that's okay. And how do you know, Kay Michelle, you know how she do. She was just digging, digging. I said, Kay. And then she started talking about, they, uh, my niece started talking about them two going on tour. Kay was like, oh, child, bye. It ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. You two bitches go right ahead on and go on tour and kill each other, girl. And I'll be right here watching, honey. I said, you ain't never going to get the chance to be Kimberly. You are Kay Michelle. You are a messy bitch, and we love you for it. <laughs> you are so messy, Kay. Oh, my God. And my niece is like, K is not being messy. K is being K. No, baby. K is it's messy. And that is K. You're right. That is K. But she was so out of order. I was like, she was reading them both. I was like, Lord have mercy. Later on after that, we saw K Michelle. I felt kind of bad for her because she didn't did the whole IVF process. The surrogate is ready to go. And we found out that the eggs that they took from her were of a low quality. Um... He said, like, on a scale of one to seven, her eggs were a three. And it didn't surprise me because when she did, the, when she produced those eggs, though she was in the midst of all of that surgery and all of the, the bad silicone and all of that going on in her body. So it doesn't surprise me that her body was working against her at the time, you know what I mean? And not working to his full potential. So he wants her to go through the IVF process all over again, all them shots and all that. All that money, child, too. I said, wow. So she's thinking about it. She's going to do it because she really wants it. I, I was thinking it was really crazy, and I still think it's kind of crazy. Um, But she really wants this set of female twins. So, girl, it is what it is. And if you're going to do it, you want y'all want to try to play God, honey, and be doing all of this kind of carrying on, you got to do it to your best, honey. Ain't no need to start off. With no weak eggs, you might as well go ahead. If you're going to do it, do it. And go ahead and do it again. And I mean, you know, just do it, child. Do it to the best of your ability. Ain't no need to start. I would be afraid to start with eggs that I know are weak because I would be scared that something would be wrong with my babies. And if you could actually, like I said, and I hope nobody takes offense to when I said you're, you want to play God because that's kind of what they do doing when they get to playing all of this doing this, you, the whole IVF process is really, you know, when you start making child bearing into a man-made situation, you're playing God. It is what it is. Now, I mean, am I against it? No. It is what it is. You know, science is what it is. But um, God is the one that kind of puts all that together. And when you start adding your own little stuff, Child, sometimes you create problems, and that's all I'm saying. But whatever. If you know that you're starting off at a deficit, why do that? If you're trying to do something that's really outside of our realm, you need to do the best that you can do as a human and go on and redo the IVF and try to get your eggs on a seven level instead of on a three because I'd be afraid that something be wrong with the babies. And why do that if you don't have to do that? You don't need problems with your babies. Trust me. You don't need no problems with your babies. Don't nobody want to do that. That's horrible. That's a horrible thing having to be trying to raise babies and, and nurture babies that are sick from the beginning. Mm -mm. I, I say give it your all and 
just start all over, girl. But um, that's, you know, who am I to tell her what to do? But I just think that she's trying again. Anyway, moving on. I'm leaving that alone. If I offended anybody, um, I ain't taking it back. I wasn't trying to offend you, but I ain't taking it back. Moving on. Okay, so then we see Brittany and China at the studio. China's nervous to get started. Brittany's not. Brittany's like, you know, she she was really um, boosted her up and told her, come on, girl, we're ready. We're going to do this. You know what I mean? She, she really... She, you know, she got it for China. She thinks that China's going to do well. So cool. Let's go. Um, She started telling a little bit of her story. And she started talking about how her mom was a drug addict. And her mom basically put her out. And the last time she talked to her mother was like six, seven years ago. And China, which we all know China, Black China and Tokyo Tony, honey, them and that mess of a relationship they got. But China was still telling her, you know, girl, she was speaking forgiveness over the situation and tell her, you know, you got to try to, you know, forgive your mom for some of the stuff and try to work with her and and let her be, you know what I mean? Let it mend itself. I said, well, go ahead, China. You know, so that was cool. That was cool. Interesting. Very interesting. Let's move on. Um, April and Fizz. The bullshit of the bullshittiest. Okay, here we go. So after this scene, I'm really sick. I'm done. I don't care if I don't see any more Fizz or April. You understand? And we're only two episodes in. April and Fizz are full of shit. And that's what I wrote on my notes. They are full of shit. That's what I wrote. They're full of shit. They sitting up in here. Y'all, I don't know who y'all think y'all playing with. We see y'all, honey. They up in here talking about, he just stay. oh yeah, I stayed the night over April's house, so what? I'm on tour. She said I could crash in her place. The, now they talk, then they were talking about moving together. Okay, y'all already together. So stop trying to play with us. Y'all are living together. And now y'all talking about getting, a, I guess, a bigger place together. And then when he sat there and April told him about the, the tour and stuff, and he started clowning my niece about her artistry. I was like, Fizz, you patty. You've always been patty. And you've always been a fuckboy. You know, we've been calling you that forever. But you don't even deserve the camera time. I am done with you. You have no reason to be sitting there down talking Monique like that. There's no, no reason. No reason. I hope she tears you up when it gets down to town for this um, reunion. I hope she leap over in your lap and scratch a layer of your face off. Because you you have no reason to be doing that. And April, you girl, you part of the ain't shit crew. Sorry. Them two, I'm done with them for now. They got to do something really good to make me get back on on board with them to like walking children in nature or something but uh uh you two are definitely part of the ain't shit gang moving on mr ray has this party celebrating him being the great creative director at heritage records and um yo 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 shows up and summer bunny showed up First, and she got to talk to Summer Bunny because she had talked to her a little bit when there was the whole little thing with her and Apple Watts. Um, she talked to her and told her, you know, you drive them tears up and you don't let nobody break you down. You got to toughen up. But she was just reiterating what she said and told her, you have to toughen up, sis. You have a talent. You are a real talent. And when you got talent, you don't screw. She said, that's it. You got the goods. She said, you got to learn. When you have the talent, you don't fuck, honey. That's that's just the way. You'll never, if you want to be like I am, you got talent. You don't fuck, honey. I said, come on. She was spitting some real stuff. Then Ray J and Princess comes up. Now, Mr. Ray had already said in this confessional that he invited everybody to his party, period. And that everybody needs to act better doing what it is they're doing to reach the goals they're trying to reach. And he ain't sitting around babysitting. No grown folks. They gonna have to figure it out. I said, well, God bless you. And I hope your party turns out good. But I doubt it. Um, Princess and Ray J show up. 
they introduce Ray J to Summer Bunny. Ray J's shady ass is like, oh, Summer Bunny. You know the, the, the homie A1, right? I was like, oh, Lord, honey. First thing out of his mouth. She's kind of sitting there looking stupid. And I said, see, again, you can't outrun a bad rap. You can't. Princess is in her confessional now letting Summer Bunny have it. Letting her have it. So basically, in this group, you already have a bad name, which is what you were crying about, about people are seeing you as a home record, this guy thing, and the other. Well, girl, I mean, come on, seriously, we've only seen you in two scenes. Um, your name has been mentioned multiple times before we got to the two scenes that we've seen you. And each time your name was mentioned, your name was mentioned when another dick that didn't belong to you. So, girl, I mean, your name is mud in these streets already. You got work to do, sis. I'm like, oh, my gosh. And most of the girls are very much giving her, especially the ones with mates. They ain't even trying to hear it. So I'm like, oh, God. So it's like, all right. And the next thing you know, baby, in the room comes Apple Watts and Lyrica. Apple Watts that went and brought Lyrica to the party with her. And that's when you see my screenshot. You see Ray J's face. Like, oh, shit. And that's where it cut off at, y'all. So, look. <sighs> see y'all next week. I told you I love Hollywood. Hollywood. Hollywood is entertaining to me, honey. It's very interesting. And I don't know where people... Hollywood never gets boring. These folks be having some mess going down. You hear me? I'll see y'all next week. Later.